How's it going? Welcome to the shop. Hope you're having a great day. I know I am. It's heat treat day. Yeah, man. Are you ready for this? Here we go. All right, welcome back. So last night I went ahead and just painted this 01 up with anti scale. These two are 52100 and 80 CRV. If you watch a previous video I put up here, uh, you'll see that you don't really need the anti scale when there's chromium in. I'm doing something a little different. I'm not gonna do all the slow motion and all that, at least at this part. I'm gonna try, cause it says tomorrow is uh, 58 degrees. So I'm gonna try to do the oven heat treating and the outside heat treating all in one video. That way we can compare 01 in the oven and 01 from a torch heat treating. So this is kind of uh, knocking off two birds with one stone where we're testing the 01 and we're also showing you a beginner heat treating. I know the oven isn't a beginner, but uh, I just wanted to tie it all together. If you've watched me before, you know I gotta get this out of the way. The Amazon links are down below for most of the tools I use, the cameras and all that, the belts, anything I use when I'm making my knives Mostly, if it's on Amazon, it's on the links. Also, shirts like this, and a few knives are on there. All on my website, I'm gonna put it up here from now on, and it's also down in my links. So what I did is I made sure these were all flat. Because before, last time I didn't normalize the blades, it came out and it was really warped, and I was like, see if you don't normalize stock removal, it warps. But I wanna give it a fair shot. So I checked all these, these are perfectly straight. So now we'll see if they come out warped without the normalization cycle. So the oven's heating up. When we get up to 1450, I'm gonna throw these in and then we'll take it from there. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and throw all three in at once, but I've shown these before. If you don't know how to forge and you have a welder or know someone that has a welder, man, I bought these. This is just a half inch from Home Depot and then an eighth inch flat plate from Home Depot, I cut one into jaws, and then up here, this is the same eighth inch as this. I just welded two little small pieces together, I cut a slot in the top one, welded it all together, then slid this into it, bam. And together, same thing, I put a slot in these, welded them all together, and then that's just a bolt. I've had these for probably three years and they've worked perfect ever since. You have to kind of tune up in here to get these how you want them. If you can't afford it, you gotta be on top of it and figure out ways to make things like this. Just like the heat treat oven. I still got, that's another thing I gotta start building. Here's the sides, so that's the next project. The 80 CRV and the 5200 have a little bit more soap time than the 01. Like I said, that's already got the anti scale on it. Let's open this up real quick. Open, close, Oof. Oof. So much for that refractory cement holding and the board holding. Well, it looks like the cement helm. Problems, problems, problems. Nice and hot. I'm gonna go put this over by the window because it stinks. <laughs> See it smoking? Oh, no, that's what's stinking. I put it down on a paper towel. <laughs> that's why I got a fireproof, I got a welding blanket down here and all that stuff. You always want to be safe. I got fire bricks all insulating everything, so. Here we go. Let's get it all structured right. Well, it went back down to like 12.50, so I'll see you in about an hour. <laughs> That's another reason. This smaller oven's gotta be a lot more efficient. This oven was great. I had visions of grandeur and made it way too big, so it just can't keep up with that capacity. But it will be good for soaking knives. While the smaller oven gets up to like 1950 for stainless steel, I can be soaking them down here and then transfer them up to the 1950. It'll make it a lot easier. Well, that didn't go as planned. 
and neither did this. <laughs> uh, see, yeah, refractory cement's just not sticking to it. We'll be back when it's time to soak these. About 112, 115. By the time we get that out, it should be up because I just kicked it to high. I was having a little bit of trouble with my oven, so the auto tuning and all that, so I only had that on medium because I didn't want to get it too hot. Here we go. Make sure we get the right one. Now we're not doing hormone or anything, we're just going all the way in. Straight in, back and forth. Once again, I had to take the smoke alarms off the ceiling through all that smoke. I got a fan running. I had when I first kicked this oven up that uh that fiber board had a weird smell to it, so I'm kinda glad I didn't use it. It might not be good for indoors. It seems the oven seems to be fine without it. We're down to 1460. We want to move it back to kind of mess up, you know, get that vapor barrier going. You can see I'm kind of pulling the knife out because I'm not paying attention, but as long as the blade stays in, that's all we really worry about. You'll see the oil boiling over and all that, so it hasn't boiled in a while. We'll just keep it in there to make sure it's good. Move it around. All right. lock this back up I programmed number three to go to 1550 so we'll just kick it up so now the 52 100 and 80 CRV we can just do a 1550 and we'll let it cool down and see where we're at oh yeah no scale there we go so it's already back up to, uh, it's about $14.95 or something. Now we're going up to $15.50 for the 80 yard CRV. I'm going to turn this off because that's probably way over hot heated now. I got, let's see, here's the 60. We'll try the 65 first. Oh, look at that. Won't even touch it. <laughs> Let me put this down. Oh, it's biting a little bit back here. Woo, woo, so hot. <laughs> I'm going to let it cool, and then we're going to put this on the HRC tester. That way tomorrow when we do the, the, the uh, 1084 and all that, we'll have something to compare it to. Yeah, it's at about 1510 right now, so. All right. Whew. Been soaking about 10 minutes for these. Let me get something to wipe this blade off. I mean, make sure we wipe these off. All right, here we go. Whew. Hot. No hormones, so we're going right in. Just wiped up. See, there goes all that scale. That's what I was talking about in that last video. Seems with uh, chromium, it pretty much comes right off. This one didn't do as good as the last one, but <laughs> but then again, I did soak it a little bit longer. And I'm glad I checked because on that last one, I did uh, 1500, which it actually worked, but the recipe on the data sheets say 1550. So this one did build up a little bit more scale. Yeah, see, we're already back up to 1540. So we should be good. 128, yeah, we're good to go. That's one thing you, It'd be good to get one of these uh, temperature gauges with a K-meter and all that. Because so, you don't want your oil over 150. Here we go. Last one of the night. Oh, and of course it falls down. Ooh.
sure it cools down fully. I'm not worried about the oven door closing because this is it. I'm turning it off after this. We're done. Yeah. Yeah, look at that scale coming right off. It's got to be that chromium in it. Just flakes right off. Now that didn't happen when I did it with the 1095 and all that, so... Like I said, these are a little bit worse than the other ones because the last time, if you watch, I'll put that video up here, but those I think I only did at 1500. And they actually were, you know, perfectly fine, so... All right, let me turn everything off. And then we'll go paint the other ones. So I lied about not having slow motion. All right, so it looks like our 01 is at about a 64. A little bit under 64. So we're doing good. It looks like the 80 CRV is just a little bit lower at a 63. Still in pretty good. Not where I'd want it, but we're good. And the 52 100, we're a little over 52. So all in all, once we temper them all down to 60, they should be fine anyway. So, all right, let's get to the temper oven. As you can see, I'm using just a regular toaster oven. I've actually used the thermal couple in it and it's pretty precise. It can never be perfect, but it's it's close enough. So I'm at 400 for all three of them, which means the old one will be at like 61, maybe 62, and the 80 CRV and the 52100 will be at like a 60. To the slow motion. All right, first shot outside in a long time. <laughs> so, got my canola oil here. Just bought it. Just for you guys. I hope you appreciate this. <laughs> I got everything running on battery, so I got to check it every once in a while. So, I just don't take too long. I got another battery charging. So, this used to be my old forge, but you can see it's rusted out. A lot of people do the old refractory and all that. I just put kale wool in it and a brick. And with the town, I used two separate things. Because uh, doing one at a time, when I tried to T-join it, I found there was too many wrist to leak, so I just got two of them. Got my ball joint here for airflow. In fact, if you watch Simple Little Life, when he built his forge, this is when I was first starting YouTube. He's like, someone told me to use a ball joint. And I was like, he's gonna say my name. And then he's like, but I forget who it was. I was like, oh! <laughs> All right, so let's get this started. I got a piece of steel out here to heat my oil. Now, oh, I forgot my magnet. Hold on, hold on. The old telescoping magnet. <laughs> we don't need it for the first piece of steel. It's been a while.
it's either too cold or I just can't, you know, it, it needs to be darker out here. So, <laughs> that's a fail for now. All right, I'll have to pick another day to do this. This is just gonna be a fail. It's either too cold out here or too windy. I just can't get it all set up right. Uh, I sat there for a half an hour trying and it just failed, so. I should have had something to set the knife on and, 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 and torch it and torch it and torch it and then hit it with a magnet and all that, but every time I take the torch away to hit it on the magnet, it would cool down. But that's, that's basically the thing as you do, you know, you heat it all up and then when it's non-magnetic, you go a little bit past. I'll have to come out when it's warmer in the spring and do that, so. This is a fail for now, but that kind of gives you the basic idea. All right, let's get back in the shop. It's cold out here. Phew, all right. Well, that was a fail. Now, I did a lot of things wrong. First off, it was this is the first warm day it's gonna be, so I hurried, I rushed, I, I set up real quick. I didn't think about what I was doing. I set the camera up, it was like noon, which is, you know, the worst time for a, for a flame. I couldn't tell what color the knife was turning or anything. The best time to do that is when it's right, start getting in the dark. That way you can see the color of your knife. You know, it's too cold. Every time I'd take the uh, blade out of the flame to hit it on the magnet, it would cool down instantly. There's a lot of things I did wrong, but if you do this way, it will work. You might even want someone there with a magnet, you know, to help you. Or what I think I would do, I'm gonna do this in the springtime again when it's warmer, but I'll put a fire brick down and I'll hold it on the fire brick and go and flip it over. That was the first thing that went wrong. I'm all sweaty from running up and down the stairs. The first thing I did wrong is when I put it on that attachment, the, I didn't tighten both bolts. So one bolt fell off. So right there I was fighting trying to keep it straight. You know, that's the thing they say about being on camera, everything will go wrong. Or anything that can go wrong will go wrong right when you turn the camera on. So. This shows you what can be accomplished. Now, the thing is, if you do it this way, it's very inefficient. I would do this because it's cheap and then build yourself, go online on YouTube. There's plenty of places to show you how to build burners or buy a burner, you know, build a uh, coffee forge. You can even use that burner inside a forge or something to heat. You just need something to contain the fire. And you know, that's why I say next time I'll put a, a fire brick under it, something, something to bounce off. I don't know. See, that's the thing. The camera cut off. Both cameras cut off. So I don't know how much footage I actually got. But I had to go over to those cinder bricks. And then things started lighting on fire. And that's when I was like, okay, it's too much. I've been trying this for a half an hour. I didn't set up properly. But I'll tell you what. It's like I said before. I got to take these glasses off to keep fogging up. I've said this plenty of times. When you fail... That's not a bad thing. Now I learn. Now I know next time when I go out to shoot, you know, do it on a warm day. Do it about five o'clock or six o'clock or when it's dark, not when it's, you know, noon and sunlight. So I messed up, but I hope you can take a few things out of this. The good thing is we heat treated this in the oven so we can get on to finishing this knife. And I'll show you how to do the bevels in the next video you know, after heat treat and how we can fix the Ricasso and finish it up and everything's good. That's why I did this knife in the oven. In a couple months when it's warmer, I'll go out and I'll set up, I'll take my time. You know, it was wet, it was muddy. I know I'm making excuses. I'll fix it and we'll do a proper heat treating outside. The best thing is just to get that, to learn how to heat treat, learn what your colors are and all that and build a small forge. You know, I showed you the one I built out of a propane tank. Get a propane tank that's new. Don't don't use a propane tank that's used because there might be propane in it and that can be very dangerous. You know, an empty propane tank is like 25 bucks and there's plenty of places or use that torch. You know, fill it with kale wool and refractory cement. Make a forge, but that will work until you get it. All right, sorry about that, but we'll make it better in a few months. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. The next video, we're going to do some bevels. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. Amazon links down below. Shirts, nods, and all that are up here and down there. It, it might have been a fail, but it was still a good learning experience. So, 
Hope everyone's having a great day. And as always, take it easy.